hello everyone. I'm really a master student from Southeast University in China, and I will introduce our the web conference 2022 paper, uh, Conditional Generation Net for Medication Recommendations. Uh, firstly, let me talk about the background knowledge. Uh, this paper studies on the task of uh, medication recommendation. Medication recommendation aims to provide a set of medicines to treat diagnosed diseases of a patient. As shown in this figure, uh, the patient visited the hospital for three times, uh, and each time some diseases were diagnosed, and the doctor would prescribe, prescribe drugs for these diseases. Uh, the main challenge in drug recommendation lies in managing multimorbidity. Uh, multimorbidity can be understood as patients are usually diagnosed with multiple diseases at one time. In this situation, conducting a considerate medication recommendation is difficult. On one hand, the doctor needs to select proper medicines for each disease, uh, but there is a complex dependency between drugs and the diseases. And on the other hand, the doctor needs to avoid harmful drug-drug interactions uh, among selected medicines. Therefore, for complicated cases, medication recommendation is time consuming for experienced doctors and ever prone for inexperienced doctors. And to address this problem, the automatic medication recommendation that can assist doctors in decision making is urged. And in recent years, a series of deep learning based medication recommendation methods uh, have been proposed. Uh, those methods can be divided into two categories, instance based models and uh, longitudinal models. Uh, Instance-based models only use patients' current diagnosis and the procedures to conduct recommendations while ignoring the longitudinal patient history. And in this manner, instance-based model models fail to consider the historical disease development process. So to address this issue, longitudinal models are designed to take use of the longitudinal patient history and capture the temporal, uh, temporal dependencies. And existing longitudinal models usually consist of two stages. Firstly, they aggregate the known information into a patient level representation. And then they conduct the medication recommendation based on the patient level representation. And one problem of existing works is that they do not explicitly model the relationship between the medication recommendations for a same patient. But however, uh, in clinical practice, uh, the recommendation for a same patient are usually uh, close, closely related. Uh, for example, for patients with uh, chronic diseases, they may keep using the same medicine all their lives. So as shown as show in this figure, we also conduct a statistical analysis on the MIMIC-3 dataset. Uh, for each visit, we calculate the proportion of the medications that have appeared in history and the jacquard between current medications and past medications. We can see, that in, in most of these, uh, a large portion of prescribed medicines have been recommended before. So inspired by this, we rethink about the taking use of historical information from a medication level uh, pers pers uh, perspective. The challenge here is how to accurately determine whether a historical medication is still relevant at the present. So in this paper, we propose an encoder-decoder-based generation network to produce the appropriate medications in a sequential manner, named the Coconut, and which is uh, abbreviated from conditional generation net. The proposed model consists of the basic model and the copy module. The lower part, the lower part of this figure is the framework of the basic model, and the upper part is the overall framework with the copy module added. Okay, firstly, let me talk about the basic model. Uh, basic model recommends the medication combination only based on the patient's health condition in current visit. The basic model is an encoder-decoder encoder generation model. It consists of four modules, diagnosis encoder, procedure encoder, uh, a medication graph encoder, and the medication combination decoder. And next, I will introduce these uh, four modules separately. The diagnosis or procedure encoder aims to represent the patient health conditions based on the diagnosis or procedure codes. The encoder we use here is a transformer-based network, which can capture the interaction information between the codes. Uh, the medication graph encoder aims to model two kinds of drug relation, relations, co-occurrence relationship and the DDI relationship. Some medications are often prescribed together for better efficacy. So modeling these co-occurrence relations can help the decoder 
to recommend the drug according to the partially generated medications. And on the other hand, some medications have the DDI and cannot be used together. So when recommending a new drug, the decoder should avoid that it is conflict with the past recommended drug. So modeling these two relations can help the can help to uh, recommend a safe and uh, effective medication combination. And inspired by the previous works, we use the graph convolutional network to model these two kinds of relations based on the medical graph. Uh, and, and the last module in basic model is that uh, uh, medication combination decoder. Uh, this module recommends the medication one by one for the current visit. So firstly, uh, we've used the original embedding and the relation-aware embedding to obtain the relation-aware medication representation. Here, a multi-hair self-attention mechanism is also used to capture the interactions among the recommended medications. And intuitively, the medication recommendation task, in fact, it, is, uh, it, it aims to generate drugs that can cover all diseases and of the patient. So the patient disease and the procedural representation plays an auxiliary uh, roles during the decoding process. And to this end, uh, in the second step, we align the patient's health condition to adaptively model the uncovered diseases and the procedures to guide the next medication recommendation. And finally, we use an MLP layer to predict uh, the next uh, medication. And uh, the, the above we, 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 we talked about is the basic model. And in basic model section, we predict medications based on the patient's current health conditions, but it doesn't consider the information of a patient's historical visits. So in this section, we designed a copy module to extend the basic model, which first compares the health conditions of current and the historical visits, and then copies the reusable medications to prescribe for current visits according to the condition change. So since the patient may have multiple visits, uh, we use the hierarchical selection mechanism to conduct the copy process at each decoding step. Uh, first, we use the visit level selection to pick a similar visit by comparing their health conditions. We use two gated aggregation layers to encode the visit level health conditions of all visits by uh, aggregating their diagnosis and the procedure representations. Then we calculate the visit level selection score of the past visit by mirroring the similarity between it and the current visit. Secondly, a medication level selection is used to pick a particular medication. We use the hidden state from the basic model, which comprehensively encodes the information of diagnosis, procedures, and the recommended medication to determine which historical medication is reusable really in current situation. And after the above process is finished, we combine the visit level and the medication level scores to determine the copy probability of, the each, of each medication in past visits. Finally, we combine the generation probabilities and the copy probabilities to conduct the final prediction. We repeat the all above process to copy the reusable medications iteratively to form the complete recommendation medication list. And then uh, finally, we conduct comprehensive experiments to demonstrate the effectiveness of, of our model. We use the MIMIC3 dataset and compare our model with several baselines methods. And overall, our proposed model outperforms all baselines with a higher G-card and F1. Safe drug achieves a lower DDI rate by introducing the additional drug mo molecular information. However, uh, the MIMIC3 dataset itself has an average DDI of uh, 0.08379, uh, and our model has a uh, similar performance. Uh, it suggests that our model mimics the behavior of physicians in prescribing medications well. So to verify the effectiveness of each model of Coconut, we design several ablation models. Uh, and overall, the complete Coconut outperforms all ablation models, which means that uh, each component of our model is integrated. We can also draw some other conclusions. Uh, first, a copy module with the visitor level selection bring a significant improvement to the basic model. And the second, diagnosis and the procedural information play a greater role in medication recommendation. And finally, graphs and the beam search also have contributions to the final result. Uh, 
uh, it is worth noting, noting that we use the beam search strategy in the inference phase because it generally has a better performance than the greedy strategy. And to further explore whether our model can better capture uh, historical medication information, we investigated the impact of the number of visits on the performance of different models. We can see that our model achieves relatively better performance with more visits. But the reason may be that Cognet uses the attention-based hierarchical selection mechanism, which can more effectively incorporate the information of past visits and avoid the error accumulation problem. Uh, also, we present an example patient in MIMIC3 to illustrate how our Cognet conducts the copy mechanism to improve uh, medication recommendation. You can see this patient visited the hospital twice, and due to the space constraints, we use the international ICD codes to represent the diagnosis results uh, and the ATC classification system to represent the medications. At the first time, uh, the patient was mainly diagnosed diagnosed with A11D, uh, N07B, et cetera. And then later, the patient returned for a second visit. A second visit. And in addition to the previously diagnosed diseases, the patient also had some new diseases. Uh, we visualized the copy probability computed by copy module at each decoding step of recommending the medication for the second visit. We can see. There are some uh, reusable medications like uh, A11D, uh, N07B, and uh, H07A are correctly copied by assigning high probabilities to them in previous visits. And in addition, some new drugs like uh, J01C and R03A can also be appropriately generated. It indicates that Cognet can not only copy historical drugs according to the unhealed diseases, but also generate new drugs based on the new diagnosis results. Okay, okay, let's summarize our major contributions as follows. And firstly, we propose a medication recommendation model, Cognet, uh, which can leverage historical medications to produce a more accurate recommendation. And secondly, we develop a novel uh, hierarchical selection mechanism, which chooses the reusable medicines to copy from both medication level and the visitor level perspective. And finally, we conduct comprehensive experiments on a public data set MIMIC3 to demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed coconut. And in the future, we plan to further improve our methods by introducing more knowledge or data. And that's what I want to share today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me and uh, thanks for listening. Have a good day. Well, many thanks for the very nice presentation. So questions for Rui. Thank I you. don't I don't see questions in the chat, but I do have questions. So so yes. see this data set is a data set, the mimic data set is a data set for clinical care patients who are in clinical care units. And when you evaluate the the distribution of the diseases that are treated in these in these units and also the type of drugs that are prescribe, this is not balanced. So there are certain diseases that always are present and usually these people suffer from many comorbidities, which is also something that you are studying here. But also when you see the distribution of the drugs, there are drugs that are prescribed almost in every treatment. So how do you think that, uh, how do you see that your approach can be assigned or apply in other type of data, not necessarily with clinical care units, in a cohort of people with cancer, because in this data set, there are not many uh, people who are suffering from cancer, for example, lung cancer, and the treatments are completely different. It's not the same. So, and it's not that you have like a, some type of a uh, drug for a comorbidity or for high blood pressure as for example in this data set how do you visualize or how do you anticipate that this is going to work uh in fact uh since i'm not the english native speaker so maybe i i didn't hear your questions clearly okay but, uh, so uh, okay. I but uh, i i guess uh, if you want to know that because you mentioned that the ministry is an icu data set right 
Mm -hmm, so yes. maybe there are some limitations when I evaluated my method only uh, in this one data set. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. It's very limited because see, this data set has certain characteristics in terms of the disorders that are treated and also in terms of the drugs that are prescribed. And this is actually something that will be impacting in your uh, in your results. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I know I that some treatments are, and there is a chat in the chat, some medications may be combinations of several drugs. This is what is a treatment about. Can your me method handle such combinations? So when you have like, it's like for a particular uh, condition, you need to mix several drugs and this is what is a medication. So you are also considering the combinations of medications in that case, several drugs. Can you see in the chat? The question that is there. Yeah, I see the chat. I see the chat. Is your method handling combinations of drugs? Um, okay, so probably we can take this offline, but it's important to, to see from where also you are considering, if you consider interactions between drugs, and there are many types of interactions between drugs, pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamics, and the, the effect is not the same. So it's important also to consider that type of knowledge. I'm annotating this with control vocabulary. So it's not clear to me how you are putting everything together in, all, in order to consider if you have treatments that combine several drugs, how these interactions between all these treatments are affecting the recommendation that your approach provides, but this can be taken offline. So well, many thanks for your clear talk.